This is a food truck. This is a racetrack. This is a bad idea. <laughs> 2012 Ford F550 stripper chassis Utila Master Body upfitted by Cruise and Kitchens into a food truck for Onnit. If you listen to more than two podcasts you've heard of Onnit, Onnit is a company that sells protein shakes, fitness equipment, coffee with protein in it, meat with protein in it, kettlebells filled with protein, and they have a food truck, and they have a sense of humor. And according to the employees assigned to drive this Ford F-550 medium-duty commercial vehicle, a sense of fear, love, respect, and stories surrounding their company's financially superfluous food truck. It was during Christmas, so it was a little cold, and I was... Uh, gonna refill the coffee machine. So to do that, I had to go under and like plug it back in. And I had the, the window closed, cause I was, you know, I didn't want the heat to get out. But as I was under there, about to go plug it in, some guy like bangs on the door cause he wants to shake or whatever. It scares me. I hit my head Ooh. on the corner of the, uh, the metal counter. And so I got like maybe a half an inch, uh, deep, uh, incision in my head. So I ended up having to get staples. The handles is okay. Uh, driving on it, it's, it definitely is driving like a school bus, so you have to treat it that way. I myself drive a Mini Cooper, so going from a Mini oh. Cooper to a food truck, think of like having a full case of furniture in the back of a U-Haul, and you're going yeah. uphill, uh -oh. and you're pressing your foot directly all the way into the gas, and it doesn't want to go more than 40. Mm -hmm. I know a lot of things that Jesse was telling me when I was driving, was like, dude, you're too close to the right side. It's like, well, I'm too close to the left side, so I don't know, any way I go. Well, you have to drive it like an, like grandpa. That's <laughs> it. I mean, I just drive it straight because there's a lot of stuff in that truck that can fly around. You have to really be careful of that. But as far as the acceleration and the braking, I think it's really, really good. I think the, the braking is great. It's better than the acceleration, thank God. Within the bounds of the law. I, I want to say we've, on the highway, we've gotten it up to at least 75. Um, how fast do I think it can go? Yeah. It says it can go 100 miles an hour. I say 90. It's like a boat. It's like, you know, you're kind of, you, you hit a bump, but you don't feel it until a couple seconds later, and the whole thing kind of rocks, so, yeah. I mean, I understand the concept is to kind of push it to the limits and see what it can do. Um, makes me a little apprehensive because we need it on Saturday for an event. This truck is powered by the Ford V10 Modular. Oh, you get excited, a V10 engine. Hold on. All this engine is, is a Crown Victoria engine with two more cylinders attached to it. Yeah, it's the Modular. The Modular, 4.6 liter V8. Add two more cylinders, now you have 6.8 liters. Single overhead cam, three valve per cylinder. It's not a performance V10. You know, you hear V10, you think Viper, oh! Because the only place we see V10s are in performance vehicles. Think Audi R8 as well. But this is a 10-cylinder engine that is made to be a utility engine. Why not a diesel? Well, Ford made a gasoline-powered engine for commercial applications where the customer or client felt that they would be operating their vehicle in an environment where access to diesel fuel wouldn't be readily available. So they would need a gasoline engine with low compression, high life, that could pull like a diesel. So they added two more cylinders to the 4.6 modular, and it became the 6.8 liter modular V10. Does it rev any better? No. Does it sound different? Not really. The numbers are respectful enough, I suppose, 320 horsepower and 460 pound-feet of torque. The modular V10 was only offered in commercial vehicles and as a rare option on the Ford Excursion SUV. And also some versions of pickups, but you have to look for it. Assigned to drive the Onnit food truck around Harris Hill Raceway is Monica Harrison, race car driver and track instructor here at Harris Hill. She's brave, but this is a new task. Yeah. 
they going out again? Oh, they still got 10 minutes, so. Yeah. Oh, look at that thing lean. <laughs> That was way more fun than I thought it was going to be. It doesn't look like you're going very fast when you like are just watching it. Yeah, it's a special. Kind but of I mean, I ride in this truck and I drive this truck, and I know like I've never heard it, the engine rev that loud. I was like, I'm, it's let's do it. <laughs> it's a special kind of roller coaster. Yeah. My heart rate is through the roof. <laughs> I have no idea what just happened. Uh, top of the hill, turn four. First time through was. What's it gonna do? 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 Oh, I'm driving a cloud. It just, things don't stay in place when you're on track. You start turning the wheel, the vehicle starts to roll over, and then everything just slides. I was not feeling a lot of weight bias yet. I wasn't pushing it really hard yet. Um, I'm guessing the weight bias is to the left, but it's gonna take a few more laps to be certain just how severe that is. I trust the brakes pretty well. I wasn't trying to threshold brake, but I felt like I could tell what was going on when brakes were working very well. I think it has a kick down, because if I put my foot down on the floor, it downshifted as far as it could and just held low gear and just pushed, and it went. When I asked it to go, it was between four and 5,000 RPM. Mm. Yeah. Um, it would get up to five, it would get a hair over five, and then it would downshift, or upshift. And now it's my turn. This was eerie. The body has no cross bracing. It's like this. Take a shoe box and give it two rulers to the bottom. Like glue, glue two rulers to the bottom of a shoe box. Now pick the shoe box up with two hands and give it a twist. Yeah, it's not going to hold its shape. Now this food truck's going around the racetrack, it doesn't want to hold its shape. There's no cross bracing along the sides of that box or the top. The only thing holding this vehicle together is the ladder chassis down below. Just let it come in. Aubrey, I'm not, I'm not wrecking your truck. Oh wow, that leans, 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 leans. Keep turning, All it'll right. hold. Turn it, turn it, turn it, turn it in. Here's the elevation change where we go down. Oh boy. Oh boy. Get a tight left. Make it go there. Good There's job. an old Good adage work. that says if you can't make money with a food truck, you must be doing something wrong. But that's always seemed unfair. As stupid as it may sound to say, maybe making money isn't exactly the point. Maybe it's just a midlife crisis. After all, how many people would just love to quit their jobs and get the hell out of Pennsylvania? They dream of serving up tacos, or hot dogs, or hamburgers, or maybe things that may or may not be sandwiches, depending on whom you're arguing with at the time. Maybe it's for peace of mind. Imagine being a waiter and having to field questions about the menu from Let me ask you a question, guy. He knows what he wants, but he has to hear himself talk first as an appetizer. Just ask the damn question. No preamble needed. You know what? No, don't ask the question because you could have just as easily looked down at the menu where every single item is printed and exactly what's in it and exactly what type of bread you get it on. Having a food truck means serving whatever the upvoted hell you want in exactly the same way you want to serve it, presumably without the insane overhead of an actual physical restaurant space. After all, Building a restaurant doesn't guarantee anybody showing up, but when you're mobile, you can go to them. But then you have people like us, who just want to take these things around a track. Of course, find me a commercial vehicle that's fun to drive. They're all nerve-wracking. Oh yeah, the transmission. It's a 5-speed automatic designated the 5R110W, and the tire size is 225.70R19.5. Yeah, they make half sizes in wheels. And these commercial wheels are 19 and a half inches across. The rear end axle ratio is 4.88. It has gas filled shock absorbers, a 175 amp alternator, and a 750 CCA maintenance free battery, as well as a diesel generator out back. Funnily enough, it has adjustable sway bars. The MSRP on a Ford F550 commercial strip chassis is $25,325. That's just for the chassis, no body. I don't know what this thing cost after you 
Utilimaster built the body and Cruz and Kitchens built the inside. And zero of these three companies envisioned anybody being crazy enough to take this thing on a track. By all rights, this should have been a disaster. And not a disaster of Titanic proportions, because that's not just the story of a boat, but the story of an iceberg that sank it, and the hubris that sent it toward that watery grave in the first place. Then again, maybe this is like Titanic. No one died here. But there is a sort of hubris involved in even thinking you can take this out on a track without the awning popping open, which it did, or without everything falling over in the back. Maybe that's the story of food trucks in general. The hubris of thinking just having one is enough. That food trucks are instant money when in reality they require more upkeep than an average vehicle and just as much effort and dedication as a restaurant. Because wherever you go to the customers, or whether the customers come to you, you're still just trying to reach people. But then, you know, aren't we all? So thank you to Onnit for, for approving this crazy idea. So, how fast did a food truck go around Harris Hill Raceway? Let's go to the board. We have the time for the food truck from on it and we know it's going to be down here for the harris hill lap times what are we up against monica well we are up against starting from the bottom a kawasaki mule which is basically an off-road tool vehicle yeah that's for those of you who aren't into off-road stuff that's sort of the stuff you see going <laughs> hunting or for farm work that it's a four passenger yeah. atv thing and up above the mule we have some guy on a bicycle <laughs> with a time of 452.106, so 4 minutes 52 seconds. What is the, uh, the van hool? I'm not sure what oh, van that's the hool. It's a 57 passenger van, it's a bus. Oh, okay. Yeah, so that's a bus going around in 3 minutes 20.3 seconds. Above that is a SWAT truck. Yep. And it says fully loaded. So that's with all the gear and everything still in it. Above that, what's it? Oh, Ford Traveler. Oh, 1928. Yes. That's like a Beverly Hillbillies kind of thing. Yeah. And now we're getting into a real vehicle, a Hummer H2. With, with the trailer. Oh, holding a trailer. <laughs> yeah. So this is, this is its competition up there. What do we got? 228.03. So it beat the mule. It beat the guy on the bicycle. It beat the bus. It beat the SWAT truck, but it didn't beat the car from the 20s. That's where we are. Driven by Monica Harrison. Thank you. <laughs> we did a food truck Ford, then took it on a track that's more or less the gist of what we did. And we spilled things everywhere and there's a...